I'm thinking and dreaming about downwinning at Lake Suk. Let me explain. I think in all the foiling community, downwinding is kind of the new way to go. Everybody's talking about it like the Progression Project podcast, Casey in Australia, in Hawaii, they are all going crazy going downwinding. And even in Europe, some people start going downwinding or at least talking about it like the generic foiling podcast. So then the second thing is I like a new challenge. I learned pump foiling, it's great. I'm not the guy that is so much into learning tricks and I worked very much on my endurance, but in winter it's really hard, so I want a new challenge. And that would be kind of flat water paddle ups with a foil or downwind session. And also I went kind of downwinding with my pocket pump foil board. And that was so much fun. But um, when you go down, you have no way to get up again. And then sometimes, depending on the lake where you go, you it's very difficult to get out. Sometimes it's private, sometimes it's like kind of natural habitat where you cannot get out. So you need a downwind board to really enjoy the downwind foiling. If you make a mistake, you can paddle up again. And that's why I want to learn downwinding. Then the question is, can you go downwinding on the lake? Most people, they go downwinding in the open ocean, which is awesome, or at least at the coast. But in Switzerland, we don't have a coast and we don't have an ocean, sadly. So we only have lakes. And I've saw several videos of people going on the bigger lakes, like a Lake Le Mans. But unlike smaller lakes where I live, I live at Lake Sug. It's not the smallest lake, but it's also not the biggest lake. The question is, is it possible to go downwinding there? I had the idea because this year I moved to this lake and every day I can watch the lake out of my window. And in springtime and in autumn, we had so many days with so much wind and white caps. I thought like, man, this is so sad, I should go downwind fighting at this lake. So talking about this lake, um, people said that you need at least 5 kilometers of lake, that the waves can be built up by the wind. So this lake is like 13 kilometers long, but I'm not sure if the wind is only really strong at the bottom part, which is the southern part, because the wind usually comes from the north and goes south. And we have two mountain ranges close to the lake and they are kind of like a turbine really producing a lot of wind at the end of the lake and not so much in the beginning. So the question is, will the wind be strong enough to go downwinding even at the middle of the lake to go like to the bottom of the lake? I think it's possible. I saw somebody, Mr. Superstoke, shout out to his channel. He's like downwinding on a small lake in Bavaria with the inflatable support, which looks really interesting to me. And that gave me the hope that it should be possible here at Lake Suk. The wind is not really stable, it's super gusty and it, sometimes it comes really fast and then it disappears really fast. So you have to be quick. It's not like the whole day is like a really new king, but it's like you have to be spontaneous to be able to go and you have to be fast. And then the other question is, will the kind of waves be big enough? Sometimes the wind is like around 12 to 50 knots, which is not very much for downwinding. It's possible some guys can go at 12 to 50 knots, but it's definitely um, a lot more difficult. And sometimes we get winds around 20, 25 knots and even gusts to up to 30. So I guess those will be the better days. Answering the question of how do you learn downwinding? at least from what I know, you have kind of two options. The first one is you do it the easy way. You go wing foiling, you go upwind, and then you try to go downwind with using like only the foil and not so much the wing. I bought a wing foil or bought a wing to go wing foiling, but I haven't been so many days on the water because either there was not so much wind or if there's really a lot of wind, I would go kite surfing or kite foiling. And so I haven't been really going enough wind foiling to be able to go try like wing foiling downwinders. So the other option would be to learn a flat water paddle up and then try to learn to come up in waves where you have like downwind conditions and that's the way I want to learn. Then the question is what board do you buy? So many companies are like producing downwind boards now. You see like a lot of kind of similar outlines and the question is which board to buy. Unfortunately, those boards are not cheap. They are kind of expensive, like ranging from 2000 to 3000 euros. And usually you need to like a good pedal. So like it's, it's not the cheapest way to start. Interestingly enough, I ride Gong and I'm very satisfied with the Cyrus. So I thought about looking for a downwind board from 
Gong and they have like two options. They have like an inflatable version, it's called the Gong Hype Crusader, and then they have the hardboard version, like the Gong Crusader. Interesting thing is, kind of Gong is the only company or one of the few who are producing inflatable downwind boards. And the question is, can you go like really downwind subfoiling with them? You see a lot of team riders from Gong going like in light wing, like wing foiling, but I haven't seen so many people going downwind subfoiling with those boards, with those inflatable boards. The advantage of an inflatable board, of course, is you can store it really easily, you can travel with it really easily, just have to pump it up and deflate. That's probably a minor because with a hardboard you don't need to do that, which is nice. But for me, I really like the inflatable version, being able to store it nice and neatly and being able to bring it somewhere. We don't have so much space in our van because we are family and I have too much surf and camera gear. So the less volume, and packing is like really much better. But the question is, is it possible to go downwinding with them? And as you can see, Mr. Superstore went on a inflatable downwind board. So it's possible. It's probably not the easiest way. The question is, will it be good enough? It would be really interesting to hear your thoughts. What are you thinking about it? Uh, inflatable downwind boards, really a good way to go. Will more brands follow into that idea? Or will it like kind of only stay with Gong? And that's like the first question. The second one is um, really interesting. Gong brought them out this beginning of the year in 2023 and they put sales on the two boards. That means they are producing like the new one and it will come out in several months, um, a latest in spring, and they will probably update the two versions. And the question is, will the updates be like really major developments? like really improve them or will it only be slightly design issues because right now with the sale they are really cheap you can buy like a gong hype crusader at 600 euros or like uh, the hardboard version the gong crusader for like 900 euros which is like crazy cheap compared to like a diamond board of 2000 or 3000 euros so the question is will they change much i think that they will change the um, gong crusader the hardboard because it's very thick, 18 centimeters thicker than most other brands out there. So I think they will make it thinner. I might be mistaken. I would be interested in what you think. But they will probably improve their version. Speaking about the inflatable version, I don't think that you can improve so much about it because the, like, the plastic won't get so much better and the foiling plate out of carbon will kind of stay the same. So I don't think that the improvements on that version will be major. So. If you go for an inflatable, maybe it's really worth buying one. I'm interested very much to know what you are thinking about it. I learned so much from all the community and I think if everybody contribute and like gives his experience, knowledge and thought, we know much more than usually the brands are telling us. And so I would be very interested to know what you're thinking about it. If you also consider subfoiling at a lake, going downwinding, and if you think about inflatable boards for downwinding or would you rather choose a hardboard and when are you going to buy and what are you going to stay with i would be very interested to know that otherwise thank you very much for liking subscribing and um, watching commenting um, i haven't been foiling much because i got sick as you can hear my voice is still not too well i won't be foiling i guess this year because we're going on vacation and in the mountains there's no place to foil or really pump foil so i'm wishing you a merry christmas and a happy new year may the foiling be with you always ciao